Hello and welcome to this new video about matrices in Python. Array and matrices are very important objects in computer science. Today I want to show you how to create and manipulate matrices of different dimensions in a smart way. To solve some problems, in fact, you need matrices of different shapes based on the input. So what do I mean by handling matrices in a smart way? We'll see that later after a quick recap. The most basic implementation of a matrix in Python can be done using the list data structure. If we take a simple list of, let's say, 10 integer elements, we'll have a matrix of one dimension with 10 elements. In programming, a synonym of this type of object is the word array. You know that to address an element in a Python list, you must use the square bracket notation. If our list is called, for example, L, we can use L of 0 to address the first element. To create a matrix with more than one dimension in Python, we can use nested lists. If, for example, our matrix is a square matrix of side 2, we'll have four elements in total and we can address each element using a sequence of square brackets. All this works for simple use cases, however, when you deal with a problem that needs to use matrices with different dimensions based on specific conditions, this system has some limits. A possible solution to these problems is using packages such as NumPy. NumPy offers functions to create matrices called multidimensional arrays. Now I'll show you a Python script that creates square matrices using different dimensions and sets values in specific matrix indices using a different notation than square brackets I talked about earlier. Starting from the main function, we see a call to the gen matrix function. This function takes the dimensions and side as inputs respectively. In this case, the dimension is 1 and the side is 10. This means that we'll have a basic NumPy array similar to a normal list in Python with 10 elements in total. Nothing really impressive here. If we read the next few lines, we see two calls to the matrix set function. This function changes one element of the matrix at a time. In this case, we are changing the index 2 and 4 with the values 81 and 4432, respectively. This can be achieved with the square notation as well. If you set m of 2 equals 81, you would get the same result. But what if we want to set a two-dimensional matrix with side 4? We can do that thanks to the matrix set function. If we want to change an element in the matrix, Instead of doing m of 2 of 1 equals 156 to address the element 2, 1, we just need to create a list of two elements with 2 and 1 inside. This method can be used for any square matrix of any dimension. The only limits are bound by memory. In fact, in this example I prepared the script to go up to four dimensions. Using NumPy and creating functions that work this way saves tons of code. You don't have to create conditions to check the dimensions both when creating and addressing a matrix. Talking about functions, let's see how these work. Starting from the GenMatrix function, we see that we have dimensions and side as inputs, as I said earlier. The first thing to do is to create a tuple containing the shape of the matrix. The length of this tuple represents the dimensions while the elements in it represent the side of the square matrix. When I use the term square here, it is intended to be an n-dimension square, not necessarily a traditional 2D square. This means that the resulting matrix returned by this function will always have the same size for all dimensions. You can think of an isomorphic matrix. The matrix is then creating using NumPy zeros method. 
Let's now look at the matrix set function. This function takes the matrix and a list of indices as input. The list is transformed into a Python tuple so that addressing and value changing can be done directly. To conclude this video, NumPy has the possibility to transform NumPy arrays in normal Python lists using the handy toList method. That's it for this video, if you want to know more about matrices, like and subscribe. Bye bye.